Uh, hello, everyone. So I would like to thank you guys to uh, join our webinars today. So today we'll be uh, talking about continuous archiving and point in time recovery for PostgreSQL databases. So basically, it's the long waited and wanted feature for us. So, uh, so we are very happy to share uh, in this release. We are able to uh, share with this webinar with you and you will be able to use uh, this QTV feature for uh, uh, till this release. So uh, I, I want to proceed what we have today. So we'll be uh, introducing you to the continuous archiving and point in time recovery without Postgres and then uh, we'll do a live demo of how to how you can use this continuous archiving and point in time recovery. And I uh, would like to hear about thoughts and if you have any questions or these things. So I guess uh, we could start with the concept of continuous archiving and continuous uh, archiving and point in time recovery. So first of all, uh, let's say you have a Postgres uh, database server deployed on your production. So uh, what basically we do is like uh, we schedule a backup daily or something like this. So let's uh, imagine we have a daily backup uh, scheduled. So um, let's say, so every 20, uh, 24 hours, there, there will be a new backup with our current state of our databases. But let's say uh, at some time, uh, uh, accidentally your data got corrupted or uh, some of your uh, database DBA just uh, uh, drop a important table for you, maybe drop all the databases, then how do you restore? So what you have is the earlier backup you have taken, like let's say 24 hours ago, or let's say you have the backup uh, at six hours ago, and in the meantime, the data that you have stored it in your database, you don't know, you don't have any backup of these data. So at this point, the concept of continuous archiving and point in time uh, uh, comes. So it's like if you want to uh, restore at a specific point with your database, just uh, uh, your DB has just dropped the, all of the database tables. So it's like, uh, you, but before that, you had to archive those wall files for a PostgreSQL database. So uh, a wall file is basically uh, is the log of all of the transactions that made into a PostgreSQL database. So at this point, what we will do is continuously archive our walls so that uh, we had the backup at the point we want to store. So, so this time uh, we will be uh, including with uh, our uh, kubedb installation. So it's like a simple hamchamp command. So uh, you can you can find uh, also the installation uh, full guide with the QDB documentations. Uh, we have uh, we have dependency of uh, the QDB backup tool stash as well. So uh, uh, in this release uh, we had a sort of uh, work with this both QDB and QStash. So uh, we can. Uh, we can take those backups with our backup and recovery tool stash. Uh, I'll go into the details uh, later. And we have a, another component that's called uh, site key. So it's uh, basically uh, it's basically another tool uh, that that will allow to uh, manage your archiving the uh, wall files uh, uh, accordingly. Even if you had a sort of failover scenarios, but uh, uh, we'll also see this uh, in action. Uh, uh, we had some additional uh, requirements to uh, do the uh, point in time recovery. Uh, so uh, one thing is currently uh, uh, we'll, for this demo, we'll be using a sort of, a, uh, uh, we will take a volume le uh, level backup for the base backup that we are intended to do like say, 24 hours. So for taking a volume level backup, you, you, you will need a supported volume snapshot class. So in your, uh, your whatever storage class or the whatever uh, CSR driver you have that have to support with this sort of uh, volume snapshot. 
So uh, for for the, today's demo, we'll be using sort of uh, the Longhorn as uh, our uh, our CSI driver. So uh, uh, there is a command to install Longhorn on a Kubernetes system, and uh, it's the sort of the volume snapshot class we'll be using. So another thing we we depend on the external snapshooter to take those uh, take and manage those snapshots so so you, you will need to uh, create this uh, for the external snapshooter as well uh, these are the basic uh, CRDs of the uh, external snapshotters and uh, I, uh, we have uh, sort of uh, the the uh, prerequisite concept of point in time recovery. So, uh, first thing, uh, the if we want to archive our wall files or the volume snapshot, that should be uh, stored somewhere. So it's like uh, we we uh, we had a concept of uh, backup storage. You can see that comes under the uh, Kubestash uh, API version. So it's like uh, uh, it's uh, you can see that it's uh, here. It's kind of backup storage. We are giving it a name. And then in the provider section, we are referring to S3. So we want to sort of, uh, uh, we want to sort of store our wall files into a S3. So if you want to, let's say we can use uh, uh, GCP or Azure or maybe a host, host path as well. So here is just the information that you need to this S3. We have uh, from the bucket, the bucket name, and the endpoint, as well as the region and the prefix we want to store our uh, data. And then we have a secret called the storage. You'll see that in the next slide. Uh, that 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 could, that that will hold the AWS uh, access key ID. So. And another thing that also provided by the QStash is the retention policy. So this is the how much data we want to store in uh, for our snapshot. Uh, the snapshot could be very large. So so the, uh, so how much or how long we want to store our databases. So we have like currently like uh, 30 days of retention period and then we want to uh, keep last 100 uh, successful snapshot something like this and uh, we have the secret for the backup storage so if i if you look at the secrets uh, so we have the sort of uh, the aws access key and uh, access uh, access key id so and we have uh, another secret uh, like uh, the encryption secret so it's the uh, it's uh, basically used for encrypting the data when we push into the sort of uh, the S3. Uh, and uh, here is the actual terminology where where we, we would uh, combine this uh, sort of uh, the PostgreSQL database to archive uh, into the cloud. So uh, here we, uh, that comes with the kubedb. So it's uh, referred as a PostgreSQL archiver. So you can see the uh, here we have defined the, the databases we want to archive. So it will select the those databases uh, from the that that matches this namespace and this selectors. And uh, we have a uh, sort of a uh, go the retention policy here, the encryption secret, and uh, when it uh, comes to like uh, when you want to schedule your full backup when you want to schedule your manifest backup, those sort of schedules. So like uh, we want to uh, schedule a uh, full backup at uh, every day at 3.30. And uh, also a manifest backup every day at 3.30. And we also are here referring to this uh, Linode uh, backup storage. So uh, which backup storage we uh, defined uh, earlier. So it's like the integration with uh, kubedb with kubesh here. And now comes the PostgreSQL object. So basically, if you previously uh, are familiar with uh, kubedb PostgreSQL object, so you'll be uh, naming naming it. And then uh, since we want to select the, with a label, so it's have to be a, the, this level archiver is added here. 
and uh, uh, for now we will be using the uh, 13.2 PostgreSQL version and we have the storage class of uh, Longhorn and we just defined a uh, random data storage like a 1 GB for, the, for our PVCs to store data and then we refer the archiver here so the, the archiver reference will be the sample Postgres archiver if you uh, if I look back at this uh, archiver and uh, after that that will be our restore for a restore we will create a restore Postgres and uh, you know, what we will refine you know, we want to make it happen with the archiver so it's like a encryption secret uh, we will provide the encryption secret we will provide the full deep, uh, full db repository uh, where we want to uh, restore these databases and then we will provide the manifest repository and the which repository from the manifest will be uh, restored so it's, it's speaking about this uh, repository these are also created by kubestash but uh, that uh, that will handle totally uh, with the operator. So we we'll just uh, you just have to refer these uh, repositories and specifically uh, what we will point out is to the recovery time step at what point of time we want to uh, recover. So I guess uh, uh, we could uh, go uh, into the demo section uh, for now. So uh, let me go through my my setups. So basically, what I have here is uh, I have a uh, kubedb installed. Uh, I have the kubestash operator installed and uh, I had the sidekick operator installed and uh, uh, I have also a external snapshot. So I have a CSI snapshot installed uh, in, the, in the cluster. So uh, what we will do, we will start one by one with creating a backup storage. Uh, so what I have is uh, like a backup storage kind that, that is provided by Stash here. So we have a storage provider S3. Uh, and we will want we want to our data to be archived in this bucket. This is the endpoint we are <laughs> the endpoint we are defining here. Uh, since we are, will be using Linode for this, so I'll I'll create a backup store backup storage. So I can see my uh, Linux storage uh, is uh, ready. And now if I look at, uh, uh, now uh, what we need to do is uh, we can create a Postgres archiver object. So we got that. Uh, so what we have uh, is uh, we want to specify this database to archive this data. Uh, we have set up the retention policy. We have the our encryption secret. And uh, for full backup, we, we scheduled a backup for every day at 3.30. And we refer this backup store as well. So I guess the uh, archive also uh, was just uh, here on the... 
So now what we need to do, we need to do apply the retention policy as well. Just, uh, So now we can see we, we we also created the retention policy for the uh, for the archiver. So it's like uh, we will be having the max retention of uh, 30 days for now. Uh, what we need to do is apply the uh, so now we want to uh, So now we want to create a Postgres instance. So let's say uh, uh, we'll be having this uh, Postgres version. Let me create this first. So now if I look at the uh, at the YML, so I'm referring to this archiver object. So that previously we created. So what will be uh, will be created now is like uh, we we had a repli three replicas of uh, Postgres. So it will come back with three replicas and a pod of uh, uh, sort of uh, archiving the wall files. So we'll be see this. So before that, uh, before that, uh, I can confirm you that a sidekick object that is created uh, uh, here. So if I, if I if I look at the sidekick uh, YML, so. Uh, what I'll be seeing is it will create a uh, it will create a pod that that would be maintained by our the sort of the queue of uh, the sidekick operator. So uh, it's like we created the sidekick object and it will uh, create a, a pod for us. It's like a demo PG sidekick and that will be uh, responsible for uh, archiving sort of those wall files. So it's like the uh, it's using the kubedb archiver image to do so. So if I now look at the archiver logs, uh, what I can see the uh, the files are uh, archiving successfully. So I want to. I want to exec into this PostgreSQL and create some sort of data and then we want to create a sort of a, a base backup and then we, we want to try to generate a scenario where uh, we can restore in point in time. So let's do this. I'll just create a database. So I've just uh, generated 100 data to in this table. So at this point, let's say we had a, uh, we want to trigger a backup.
before that we i want to okay so what we can see uh, after we created this back, sort of backup storage we created this archiver so uh, what will the operator will do is create a backup configuration for you and if i get for the repository as well I can see the uh, we have two repositories like a uh, demo pg manifest and demo pg repository so one will be storing the uh, manifest and one will be storing the uh, full backup of the volume snapshot we had so i'll i'll figure a backup for now since we uh, we have uh, set it like uh, every day 3 30. So i'll just uh, So now, now you can see I have successfully triggered a backup. So you'll see the a backup will be run. So I can see the manifest backup is completed. We will be wait for our full backup and then we will validate our sort of data with the uh, whatever in the cloud we had. So I can see the uh, the full backup also completed. So if I go to my backup storage, So we can see uh, in the in the backup part we have a folder with the demo PG with name. We have a folder for the full backup, manifest backup, and the wall backup. So we have completed our full backup. We see the snapshot uh, here, uh, the list of snapshot uh, for the manifest backup. Uh, we will see this list of snapshot and the, for the wall backup. So sort of the walls we have been archiving through. So we can see the wall files also uh, is available on the uh, on the S3. So, so at this point, uh, we have sort of a, a base backup. We have a sort of a configuration and let's say uh, uh, we will insert some data after that. So let's uh, we want to insert another hundred data here. Uh, maybe another hundred data. So we can see currently we have a uh, sort of a uh, three hundred data. So I will I take this time. So let's say uh, the uh, time of uh, eleven twenty six. Uh, we have a sort of 300 data around here. So, I'll just switch uh, the wall so it will be pushed into the uh, sort of uh, the S3 we have. So, if I, if I go back to the S3, it will be see. Uh, another wall just uh, pushed into the clouds. So uh, let's say at the at this point uh, someone dropped these tables. So I I, I drop the uh, table tap one. So if I if I now want to 
sort of uh, see what we have here. I can I don't see any data we have, so we don't have the our table. So what do you want is we want to restore. So what I will be need is like uh, sort of this time the before uh, time before we want to sort of uh, uh, restore our database point. So I'll copy this this time. And for a real life scenario, what you can do is like uh, you can download these bin log uh, the wall files and then you try to uh, uh, dump into a sort of a human readable files and then uh, you can do it by the pg dump wall. So sort of uh, read the transaction where you want to restore. So, so what I will do is I will create a restore. So what I have did is like uh, update this uh, recovery timestamp to the point of time I want to I want to recover sort of and. Uh, uh, what else we have? We have the full uh, the the manifest we want to restore the repository of this manifest the repository of uh, the sort of uh, uh, the full backup. And let's see if we have. So if I get for the repository we want to get, it. so it's like a, we have a two repository for the one for the manifest one for the repository. So if I now apply the uh, Restore YML. So what uh, what it will be doing? It will create a restore session to uh, sort of uh, back up the uh, restore the manifest first. So if uh, it's like a, you have a database with some sort of uh, existing auth secret or something like this, so it will restore with all the configuration that you had, just like that. And if I get the restore session now. So I can see that um, my restoration succeeded and you can see another part that's created uh, we call is the PG restorer is created. So what it will do is like, uh, first of all, it will recover uh, the snap, uh, the volume snapshot we had uh, earlier, the volume level backup. So it will, uh, it will restore that part and then on top of it, it will restore the bin log sort of uh, 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 sort of the wall files uh, on top of it so we will be uh, will be uh, we will be in the restore databases with the uh, data at that specific uh, point so i can see the restore job is also uh, completed now we can see the uh, restore pg is coming one by one so i'll just wait a bit for our So I can see all of the restore pod is running right now. If I now log into the restore post case, I can see, uh, let's say the, so we can see the earlier, the high databases we have been created earlier. And if I go back to this databases, so I can see this table also there. So if I now select uh, So now you can see we have 300 data in here. So uh, when we take the base backup, we had the sort of 100, uh, uh, 100 uh, rows in this table. But uh, after the base backup, what we do is like sort of to 
uh, switches sort of walls and uh, insert more 200 data and we drop our previous tables we had, but now we can restore uh, these databases. So uh, for, for today, I have uh, sort of uh, these things to share with you. Uh, if you had any con uh, confusion with the process or anything, uh, uh, you can ask me uh, whatever it is. I'll, uh, I'd be very happy to answer this.